Hello, Phoenix. Welcome back hey. to the channel. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Phoenix and I just recorded our bit that we're going to be posting on his channel. We had a discussion where we were talking about what hunters should you ban as a survivor main in your ranked matches. And we're going to be continuing onto that conversation in this video where we're going to be talking about the flip side. If you're a hunter, what survivors should you ban? Exactly. Remember to press the like button on his video, please. <laughs> <laughs> so um, a lot of the things that we're going to mention in this video are going to kind of riff off of what we just talked about in the previous video. I think a lot of the the kind of the mental things you need to think about are going to be more or less the same. But I would say that hunter hunter bans are going to be a lot more to be much more impactful towards how the match plays out than I think a how what survivors ban. Yes? Mm -hmm. Especially since you are as a hunter someone that's got more control over what how the match is going to turn out because you decide the the exact strategy that the survivors are going to play. Yes. Yeah. Okay. What would you like to begin with? So first, I would like to mention um, that when you're looking at what survivors you're banning, you should look first about what kind of your hunter playstyle is. There are certain bans that favor certain playstyles. So, for instance, if you're looking for kind of this draw kind of consistency, so like for instance, if you're a bloody queen, you're a geisha main even like violinist, Bond, and there are certain characters that you should think about banning every time. Um, so those would be ones that could take probably like a losing situation and could um, potentially turn it around to a win for your team. Mm -hmm. So for instance, if you're playing Bloody Queen, I'd say that there are two characters that can really take a match and really shift in the survivor's favor. Well, three really. The first one I would say is probably Priestess. Now, Priestess is a character that everybody on my channel knows. I do not like this character. I do not like going against her. Um, there are many reasons <laughs> why I don't think Priestess is good for the state of the game. But basically, everything comes down to probably, I would say, the one thing she can do to turn around a match is that world portal. Now... There are many reasons why World Portal's exploitable. There are a few tricks. For instance, Perfumer can use her perfumes to get rid of like um, resonating images on the other side of the portal. There are things with being able to escape with Tide through the World Portal. There are many scenarios where if you have a Priestess on the team, she can take a losing situation and against specific hunters, especially if you're not carrying Teleport, she might be able to force out a Trump card or even worse, just totally take a dead on chair survivor and just let them get way across the map from you, even with just regular portals. Um, so I think and some characters that don't have some hunters that don't have very good mobility will suffer against this kind of character because yeah, person can just go through the portal, you knock their image down, and now you've got to walk all the way to the end of this global portal uh, <laughs> to find out the priestess just healed them up and they're already. You know, they're already two portals away because they're in Chinatown going through, like, every building imaginable. Yeah. <laughs> yes? So, yeah. There are if, also... if you're a very linear... Yeah, I guess if... Because those characters you, you mentioned, for example, uh, Anne, BQ, uh, I forgot which other characters you mentioned, Bonbon, bon, they are very linear-style hunters. Um, they follow a chase down and hope for the best kind of style strategy. Yes? Um, these you kind of also want to think about which characters are going to really mess with that one strategy that you uh, your character has. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, just continuing onto this conversation, the okay. second survivor that I think will be able to turn around a match against any hunter would probably be Forward. Forward is a very very strong character seen in where he's not banned virtually every tournament match that you watch you'll see a forward on the team and it's because his harassment is just so good I mean that's the one thing that a forward can do uh, even if it's just like in a kite it doesn't even have to be like harassing off the balloons he can harass during kites he has excellent kiting potential because he can use that forward uh, football to dash um, but even if it comes down to just stalling just like, for instance, like 30 more seconds is no problem for a football to buy um, to allow a survivor to prime a last cipher. I mean, there are just so many situations where 
having a really good forward on your team can take a losing situation and salvage it into like possibly a tie or a win for the survivors. Yep. Especially since, uh, again, we mentioned this in our video that we did to, together a while ago, um, the game is slowly heading towards more uh, teamwork. And Forward is a character that is very good at assisting in kites as well, that can be very impactful for a lot um, and a big problem for a lot of hunters uh, in general. And as we see the game being very heavily dependent on the how the uh, early game goes for a hunter, this can be a bit of an issue. Yes? Yeah. Okay. And I would say this... probably the third character I would say is able to turn matches around would probably be Seer. Seer is a character that just received a nerf on the duration of his owl just like a few months ago. But Seer, especially if you're playing like a single hit hunter, so like your Blood Queen, your Geisha, even your Anne, um, Violinus is another character that's affected by this. Um, single hit hunters have a really tough time against Seer um, because a Seer owl can give you enough chance to like get to that next portal or get to that next pallet and it can really be a thing that can just take a um, a really short kite or what would have been a short kite and expand it into kiting for like the next 60 seconds or so now i would say you probably wouldn't think necessarily as much about banning seer if you're playing a character such as um, sculptor or bon bon uh chip pet hunters don't necessarily die to seer necessarily um mm -hmm. If you're breaking wheel, I've seen a lot of breaking wheels do this uh, seer ban because the owl is also able to protect from uh, getting hit by a spike. Um, there are just quite a few hunters, I would say, that need that, that the seer ban is a necessity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if your character is something that can uh, deal lots of damage without having to deal to kind of physically hit them with your weapon. Um, your main weapon, then yeah, Seer and, and any character that is uh, has a lot of health uh, won't be too much of an issue, yes? Or has something that has like a one-time shield protection, for example, as you said, um, uh, Seer, for example, or also the new character that's um, Lucino, the professor, they can kind of uh, block hits, but you don't, you're not too dependent on that if you are a sculptor, if you are a bonbon, because you can just do more chip damage and overwhelm them without physically having to, having to touch them yourself. Yes, mm -hmm. but for other characters like, I don't know, let's say Hell Ember, for example, um, he is heavily dependent on just getting that one hit. If he doesn't get that one hit, then, oh no, he's pretty much lost the match. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So Seer can be an issue because of that okay uh there is one more character i would like to talk about though and this is the mm -hmm. the use of mercenary in rank matches so mercenary is a very very strong rescuer probably i would say the strongest rescuer in the game right now mm -hmm. uh, because he has that delayed effect in those three elbow pads that allow him to get around the map quickly he is specifically built to be able to do everything that a survivor could possibly want in a rescue character he can get across the whole map very very quickly and he has a delayed effect which gives him potentially two full hits and then some to be able to pull off a rescue so he's a very very one of the most durable characters in the game and he just he's just all around a fantastic rescuer to have on the team so he um, is very consistent he um... is very consistent Character. He's pro one of the only characters that can rescue at half health. Um, Again, yeah, some hunters, you could say. Um, he can, his abilities don't really run out per se. His, his ability to be able to rescue can be used at any point in the match as long as he's up on his feet. Yes? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, he's just a very difficult survivor because he's just so, so consistent at doing what he does best. And that is. Oh, rescuing. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Okay. What else should you consider? So another thing that you should consider is probably the map that you're on. So mm -hmm. one thing that stands out to me the most is banning Priestess on maps versus like Moonlit and Eversleeping versus banning Priestess on maps like, uh, for instance, Arms Factory. 
Arms Factory is not a fantastic map for Priestess, and she's hardly ever used there in high tier rank because it, she doesn't have all of, like the really big walls that she can just kind of bounce the survivor across the whole map. Whereas yep. on Eversleeping or even Moonlit with the Bridge, there are many places where Priestess is able to place her portals and she's able to get like, you know, halfway across the map. And that thing can be a really tough thing for hunters to deal with. So I think map plays a large portion in determining which survivor you'll choose to ban especially if you're kind of thinking about that priestess, which is a fairly map-dependent character. Um, but I think and you sh shouldn't feel bad as a hunter. A lot of times it's like, well, you feel this pressure to ban kind of one of the, you know, to ban priestess because it's such a kind of a common pick, and you're like, oh, no, I'm going to lose this match because I, you know, I didn't ban priestess, so someone's going to pick priestess. Well, on those kind of maps, it's not too much of an issue, and even if they do pick her, it's not like it's the end of the world because there isn't too much that they can do that's kind of game breaking. Yes, but if you if you are on a map where she is incredibly strong and you have two bands especially, then one of your bands should definitely be uh, a character like Priestess because I feel like this is not going to be the last time that Nettie's releases a character that is uh, like her uh, because just they, they probably will <laughs> release more in the future so any kind of character that has this similar ability of going through walls transitioning huge kind of distances across maps you do want to consider maybe banning them on maps where they are just more consistent and can do things like that and lastly i think we should probably talk about uh just kind of what type of hunter you are so for instance if you're a, a geisha a bloody queen um, you might think more about like choosing the side of banning the harassers over like the rescuers because if they pick like a character so for instance say you're a bloody queen against a mercenary um bloody queen relies heavily on that first chase uh, but she doesn't typically rely too much on the first camp so um banning a rescuer is not necessarily useful because they can always pick a character like gravekeeper or um Let's see, another rescue. They can pick, like, First Officer is able to rescue against a Bloody Queen. Virtually any character can rescue against a, a Bloody Queen or a Geisha or a Violinist. Not a Bon Bon. Bon Bon's a different type of tie hunter, but um, mm -hmm. there are specific characters that you'd want to think of that you might think of not necessarily banning, like, the rescuers. And you might focus on, for instance, like, if you're a geisha, you might want to ban the forward, because the forward is a really good pick against geisha, because mm -hmm. um, geisha sometimes has a difficult time against harassment. Um, same with Bloody Queen or Violence. Mm -hmm. I keep coming down to, like, the same characters that we talk about. Um, even if you're, like, a ripper, especially. Um, mm -hmm. If you're going for all these non-meta characters, then you just... You just want to <laughs> typically go for uh, which character. You, you kind of have to pick your poison with one of these that aren't necessarily strong against one of these classes specifically. But I think just in general, just having game sense to know like what hunter are you playing and then trying to plan out your bands based on what you want out of a match, um, what character you are, what map you are. And I think you'll be... And which aspects of the game... Uh, aren't you are you less worried about yes as you said you mentioned it like the uh, rescuing for bloody queen if you're less worried about rescuing then you don't need to worry about rescuers if you're less worried about the chase then you don't need to worry too much about banning really good chase characters uh if you're you know if you're worried about map uh, you know decoding process then maybe you want to deal you want to ban something like mechanic that used to be and still kind of sometimes does, but used to be banned quite often because Cypher Machines were going too quickly with her. Yeah, it depends on what the kind of the weaknesses of your character or which aspect of the game your character is kind of uh, very dependent on getting right and can easily kind of uh, make mistakes in or can lose badly in that you might want to kind of get rid of those consistent characters in that kind of area. Yes, I focus think... heavily on that kind of strategy. Personally, the one, my issue with banning mechanic is that mm -hmm. prisoner just exists. <laughs> yeah. So prisoner is also a very, very strong decoder. So if you ban the mechanic, you might just go against a prisoner anyways. So it feels yeah. like a, at least to me, it feels like a redundant ban 
but if you really, for instance, just like going against Mechanic or really any of these characters that like, especially if there's like a specific survivor that like counters your character. So for instance, one that I think of is if you're a forward and, or not a forward, if you're a photo, sometimes you might think about, I've seen some photos ban Doctor because yes. Doctor absolutely destroys photo. Yeah, it's, it's it's more difficult for us to talk about characters that are off-meta because, you know, everyone is specialized in their own kind of characters and we don't know what the optimal picks are for each character. We can have an idea of which, what it is, but this can also change as characters get buffed, uh, get nerfed, uh, lose abilities, get adjusted, get reworked. So, um, but it is important to kind of work out what your character does. And if it's like Joseph, photographer, there are characters that just... 100% counter you so you are kind of locked almost always locked into banning at least a certain style of character for example doctor yeah um for i'm not sure for other kind of off meta characters things that you know just casual players play and hate psychologists <laughs> okay yeah for example mm -hmm. um there are just going to be characters that are a pain to deal with as you play your specific character, and that will only come with either research into your character or playing it a lot and finding out which character you hate the most. <laughs> yes, um, that is that can be a problem. As the game is changing and evolving, the characters that you'll see being picked more often uh, and also which characters are going to be better with this current, with the new changes with the Cypher Rush uh, adjustment, but I wouldn't say it's a nerf or a buff, uh, it's just an adjustment. We will see characters kind of getting picked more often as they are better at kiting. So now, you know, you've got to think about which characters are just going to extend that early game a little bit too much. Yes, uh, for my character. If you're playing Joseph, and we've already discussed this in our pre previous video, you're kind of doomed already. So you might as well not play Joseph until they buff him. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, playing... If you combine everything as Joseph, that would be amazing. But yeah. <laughs> okay. Anything else you would like to mention? Uh, Hunters. Did we did we mention map specific? Yes. Kind of stuff? We talked okay. about like Poland doesn't like arms factory, and we had this whole conversation. There. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anything else then? I think that just about covers it. Awesome. Okay. So as we summing that all up, it's very subjective. That's what you already needed to skip to the end of the video to, <laughs> to find that out. But uh, yeah, it is very subjective. But there are definitely some things that you can sit down with some with a pad and paper and kind of work out what you do best, what you do worst. Which maps uh, are kind of for your character as well. Specifically, we did mention that there are you know if you're playing a character, you are going to have better maps and going to have worse maps, and you are going to have better survivors and worse survivors on those maps against you specifically. Yeah, so you need to, on a spreadsheet, maybe work out which characters are the best and which ones are the worst. Uh, if you don't have that time, it just takes some practice and some playing, I think. But yeah, I appreciate you having me on this uh, in this video. It was interesting, and I think something that a lot of players aren't uh, don't really think about, but do panic about when they're playing rank, because this is a kind of a small feature that is kind of gone in a couple of seconds, but does really affect the rest of your whole five minutes that you or 50 minutes sometimes of your match. Yes? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. So thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you for having me on your channel as well. Again, if you have not watched it already, go ahead and check out Phoenix's channel. I'll have a card somewhere on the screen right here um, uh, linking to his video. Um, be sure to watch that one as well and go ahead and subscribe to Phoenix if you are not already. But yeah, thank you for... And you might be able to find a link down in the description. And just above that description, there's this beautiful red button. I, I recommend you press it. It's called subscribe. If it's uh, if you've got it gray already, then well done. Just make sure you press the other button to the left. It's uh, called like. But, <laughs> as always. Uh, I recommend doing that because Music Man does some really, really good video videos. Um, I do really enjoy watching them myself. So uh, I highly recommend that. <laughs> so, yeah. As okay, always, so, this video uh, is sponsored by the subscribe button. <laughs> yay! <laughs> Don't forget to check out his future coming Twitch stream as well. Uh, Music Man Gaming on Twitch. 
Well, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please go ahead and leave a like and subscribe to this channel. It really, really helps us out. And I'm so close to 1K subscribers. We're going to be having a 1K subscriber special once we hit 1K on the channel. And go ahead and check us out over at Twitch. That's where I'm going to be streaming nowadays. I do some late night IDV rank in addition to some 5v5s and some matches with viewers on the weekends. And go ahead and stay tuned over on Twitch for more content coming that way. And I will see you all next time. Bye, everybody.